Hello, welcome back, Math 3-1. Today we're going to be looking at more problem solving with both permutations and combinations. So here you're really going to have to know when to use a permutation and when to use a combination. So let's take a look at the first question here. We have the word poppies and we want to know how we could arrangements or how many arrangements there could be of the word poppies. So first we're going to look at it without any restrictions. So without any restrictions, I look, we have the P, we have three P's that are being repeated. So looking at that there, we have a total of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven letters, so that's seven factorial all over three factorial, which in turn will end up giving me a total of 840, okay? Now it says if each arrangement begins with a P, so we must start here with a P. Now, we have one, two, three, four, five, six other letters to choose from in the rest there, but we have two P's in these here. So we still have a P repeating. So this here is only going to be six factorial divided by two factorial. Now these here, since order matters, we're doing permutations or factorials like that, which gives me a uh, total of 360. Okay, next one here is the first two letters are P. Well, we're going to have P, P, and then what are we left with? One, two, three, four, five. And if we have two P's there, the rest, there are absolutely no repetitions. So that's just going to be five factorial, which is equal to 120. Okay, now if all the P's are together, so now we're saying all the P's must be together. And then we're going to have the other ones, we have an O, an I, an E, and an S. So once again here, this counts as one, we have two, three, four, five completely different letters. Now the order of these P's don't matter, they just count as one, because it doesn't matter if I go P, 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 or P, 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 changing the order, it's still just going to be P, P, P. So this here is just going to be 5 factorial, which is the same thing as 120. Okay, now E says if the first letter is P and the next one is not P. So here we have the first letter must be P, right? So there's only one option there. And then the next letter must not be P. If the next letter must not be P, we have four other letters, I, E, and S, which could go here. So we have a choice of four there, okay? And then we're looking at this. We also have here, how many left over? One, two, three, four, five, but there are still two other P's in there. So the next is we have one times four, multiplied by 5 factorial and we have to divide that 5 factorial by 2 factorial okay because there are two repeated p's in here there's still two p's now we have 4 multiplied by 5 factorial because there's 5 there and our repetition is 2 which ends up giving me a total of 240 different com or different arrangements we could have okay so now let's take a look at class example number 3 so we have here now, a class consists of five girls and seven boys. A committee is to be formed consisting of two girls and three boys. Determine the number of ways the teacher can choose the committee if there are no further restrictions. Okay, so we have five girls and we want two out of the five girls. So out of five girls, we are choosing two. Order here does not matter. As long as they're chosen, they're chosen. Then out of seven boys, we are choosing three. Okay. So I multiply those together, that's the same as 10 multiplied by 35, which gives me 350, okay? Now B says, Johnny the principal son has to be on the committee. So if Johnny the principal son's on the committee, now we can only take a total of two boys, because one's already there, and there's going to be one last boy to choose from, so it's out of five girls, we are choosing two, and out of six boys, we are choosing two, which gives me 10 multiplied by 15, 
which is the same as 150. Okay? Now let's take a look at C. Okay? The twins, Peter and Paul, cannot both be on the committee. Okay? So Peter and Paul cannot both be on the committee. So we have three situations here. We could have Peter. We can have Paul. Or we could have neither. Okay? So we could do this two ways. We could calculate the probability that Paul is chosen, calculate the probability of Peter chosen, and then we could calculate the probability that neither are chosen. Or what we could do is do it the other way, and we could do uh, the number of all subtract if both are chosen, number of both, the number of possibilities if both. Well, I look at this, we already have the all possibilities there, so I'm going to use this one here. So we're going to go 350, subtract. Now, what's the probability of both being chosen? So that means there's only one other boy to be chosen out of five. So it's going to be out of five, choose one, okay? Because we can only have one other boy. And then we have out of five, we're choosing two and two girls. So out of five we choose 2. Okay, So I put that together, that's going to give me 350. Subtract uh, 10 multiplied by 5, which gives me a total of 300. Oops, I have 3,000. Which gives me a total of 300. Okay, now let's take a look at my last example. It says, David, Stephen, and Helen were trying to answer the following homework question. The students in a school band practice five popular and six classical compositions. For the school concert, they will choose a program consisting of three popular and two classical music compositions. In the order of the compositions matters, okay, so the order of the composition matters determine the number of different programs to be presented. So down below we have David's, Stephen's, and Helen's answer. So each student was convinced their answer was correct and asked their teacher to check their work. The teacher asked the students to write down their answers on the board and asked the class to discuss which merits each answer. So what are some possible discussions we could have here? Why is David's somewhat right? Well if we look at David he assumes that uh, he assumes that any five compositions could be chosen. There is no combination. So out of the 11, we could take any five, but that's not true. We can only take three popular and two classical. So that's why his is wrong, because David said we could take any five, but we do have restrictions there. We can only take five, three popular out of the five, and two classical out of the six. So that's why his is wrong, but his is right, because he does have order. Now we look at Stephen here. So what's the problem with Stephen here is that he assumes here, he has right, he's going order, but he assumes that all the populars play consecutively, and then you choose two classical. So there's his problem. He says all the popular, and then two classical. So that's where he's off a bit. Now we look at Helen, the very last one there. Well, she is correct. She said we are taking uh, three out of the five classical, or three, three out of the five popular, and then two out of the six classical. But in hers, no order matters. So that's why hers is slightly wrong as well. So now we have to figure out how this works. So the teacher indicated the three students had given incorrect answers. Determine the correct solution. So we are going to use kind of part of Helen's solution here. Okay? Because she was right, you have to have, we have different combinations. So we want all possible combinations, and then we have to multiply by the order of them. So once we get my combinations, we have five different things that could be ordered different ways. And so that's going to be a permutation or a factorial. So first of all, we want to look at it this way. We have five. Out of five, um, out of five, sorry, out of five 
popular, we are, we are choosing three. And then out of six classical, we are choosing two. Now we have to multiply that by five factorial because after we choose these, we put those in an order. Okay? So we end up getting, when we do this, a total of 1,800 different programs can be made based on those restrictions and what's happened.